I don't think anybody um, gets training, you know, in, in this type, and, and I've had oncologists tell me this, you know, um, I, I went to medical school and I specialized and I trained in oncology. I don't know anything about reproductive health. I'm not comfortable talking about these types of issues when, you know, I don't know about them. And still, of course, we know even among healthcare professionals, sexual, sexuality and sex and, you know, the use of body parts and uh, intimacy can um, be uncomfortable for people because of their, their own values. Um, so what the Enrich training program also helps nurses to do is to examine their own values. And they have told us that, um, you know, at first they weren't comfortable talking about assisted reproductive technologies because their own values were that they didn't support it and they didn't believe it. And they've come to realize now that, um, you know, patients should have this information and it's patients' choice to make these decisions about this information. And um, also I think in, in general the more stories that we hear about cancer patients preserving fertility or, or making the conscious choice not to and the subsequent children that are born or the difficulty that they had in conceiving or adopting, the more stories that are out there it helps kind of normalize it because um, in, in when I first started doing this, I was talking with patients about it. I said, do you know um, some of the options are if you're, um, because you have a, a gynecologic cancer and your cervix is going to be removed and you may ultimately have a, um, your uterus removed, you can still, you know, retrieve eggs and store eggs or embryos, but you would have to use a gestational carrier. And they would be like, what? You know, what the heck is that? I've never heard of anybody doing that. But since that time, many celebrities have come out and talked about, you know, their journeys outside of cancer with using gestational carriers. And it's becoming a little bit more normalized that it doesn't sound so, so crazy. Um, and so I think that that's part of the issue for the healthcare providers that, you know, this is not quite there yet, that it's everyday conversation.